So all of you be ready with this. Page 23, module 8. And switch on your cap. Yeah, uh, by the time you switch on your cam, start revising self induction, mutual induction, lens law for Edis law that we have done in the last class because now we are going to do problems based on that, okay? We are going to do MCQs based on that. So just revise what was done in the last class. I'll give you one or two minutes. And after that, we will start with the MCQs. And in the meantime, make an arrangement to switch on your camera as well. Okay, now page number 23, question number one starts all right. And tell me what do you think should be the answer, then we will also discuss. Question number one. Tell me what do you think should be the answer so that we can discuss.
Okay. Melita, correct. Ruby, correct. Mohammed, check your answer. So can you repeat the question number? Question number one. Okay, so let me read the question and let me tell you the answer. And then you tell me whether you give me the right answer. Okay, the question is, if a coil of a metal wire is kept stationary, the keyword over here is stationary. When I keep it stationary, then there is no change of flux, correct? And if there is no change of flux, there is no AMF induced. And if there is no AMF induced, there is no current also produced. Therefore, if I keep the coil stationary, I think my screen broadcasting stopped one minute. If I keep my coil stationary, since the coil is not moving, there is no change of flux. And you know Faraday's first law. Check Faraday's first law. Faraday's first law happens only when there is a change in the magnetic flux. Just check when there is a change in the magnetic flux. Therefore, if there is no change in the magnetic flux, there is no EMI, uh, there is no EMF, and if there is no EMF, there is no current. Therefore, the option which matches that is option C. Neither EMF nor current is induced. This is from Faraday's laws itself. Therefore, answer is C for the first one. Did you guys get it? Answer is C for the first one. Now, try to solve the second one. Try to solve the second one. Try to solve the second one. Give me the answer in the message box for the second one.
Now let me read the question. They have given a diagram in which there are two coils, okay? So now there is coil A, There is coil and there is coil B. Now remember, if current goes through coil A like this, current in coil B will oppose that current because of Lenz law. You know what does Lenz law mean? Lenz law means opposition, correct? Because of the minus sign. So what they are saying, in the diagram, they are showing two coils, A and B placed parallel to each other at a very small distance. Coil A is connected to the supply and G is a very sensitive galvanometer. Now, can I say when I close the key? When I close the key means what? When the current is passed, can I say current will pass through A and to oppose that current will pass through B in opposite direction. Therefore, constant deflection will not be observed. You know why? Because first, A will show some uh, current and B will show that opposition. Therefore, can I say deflection will not be constant because A and B are constantly opposing each other. Therefore, option A is not the right option. Now, if you see option B, visible small variations will be observed. Visible small variations means with your eyes, you can observe some variations in the galvanometer for 50 hertz input. Now, listen to this. Frequency is equal to 50 hertz. Therefore, can I say time equal to 1 by 50? Can I say time equal to 1 by 50 is a very, very low value of time? Do you know frequency and time are inversely proportional? That means time is inversely proportional to frequency. Now, if the frequency is 50, can I say time is 1 by 50? And 1 by 50 is very less amount of time for our human eye to notice anything. Okay, it's a very, very small amount of time. So our eye cannot detect it. What they are saying, it is visible variation. Answer is it is not visible because it happens very, very fast. Therefore, option B also is wrong. Now look at option C. Oscillations in the galvanometer may be observed when the input AC voltage has a frequency of 1 to 2 hertz. Now, when it has frequency of 1 to 2 hertz, the time... Can I say if frequency is 1 hertz or 2 hertz, I'll take it as 2 hertz. Can I say time is half second? Can I say half second if anything happens, I can notice. Because human eye can notice things that can happen in half of a second or one second. Therefore, can I say I can easily see the variations Okay, with my eye? Therefore, if you see what is the option, oscillations in the galvanometer may be observed when the input has a frequency of 1 to 2 hertz. If frequency is 1 to 2 hertz, can I say time is 1 by 2 second, half second. And in half second, if anything changes, your eyes can notice. Half second to 1 second, your eyes can notice. Therefore, till now, option C looks the right option. Now look at option D. No variation will be observed in the galvanometer. It's wrong because variation will be observed because when I'm giving some supply, galvanometer will show some deflection. Therefore, option D is completely wrong. Therefore, I am left with the most preferable answer, which is option C. Okay. Therefore, answer for question number two is option C. Now, look at both question number one and question number two and tell me if you have understood both and start with question number three. Okay. Start.
start with question number three. Start with question number three. Now, question number three says that a north pole of a bar magnet was pushed slowly into a short solenoid. So, first the magnet was pushed slowly. Okay. The keyword is slowly. Then the magnet was held stationary. So, first when it was brought towards the solenoid, it was brought slowly. Then it was kept stationary. Okay. For a few seconds with the north pole in the middle of the solenoid. And then it was withdrawn rapidly. So listen to this. It was brought in slowly. It was kept stationary, but it was taken out rapidly. Now tell me in these three cases, in which case the flux change will be maximum? When will the rate withdrawn. of change of flux be maximum? Can I say when it is withdrawn rapidly? Can I say change of flux will be maximum? Okay, when it is withdrawn rapidly, can I say change of flux will be maximum? Now continue the question. The maximum deflection of the galvanometer was observed. Maximum deflection in the galvanometer means EMF. So can I say maximum EMF is observed when maximum rate of change of flux happens? And when does maximum rate of change of flux happen? When it is withdrawn rapidly in all of the cases. Therefore, moving towards the solenoid, moving into the solenoid at rest and moving out of the solenoid. Answer will be moving out of the solenoid because when it was moving out of the solenoid, it was moved out rapidly. Just because of this one word, I came to know the right option. Therefore, answer for question number three is D, moving out of the solenoid because it was rapidly. Okay, all of you? Now, Try to answer question number four. Start.
I will do it. Just listen to me how I get it. And then tell me whether you have understood because you have to solve many problems in the, in the same logic. Okay. Now listen. A coil of area, everyone look at the screen now. A coil of area 100 centimeters square. Therefore, area is 100 centimeters square. Can I say 1 centimeter square is 10 power minus 4 meter square? One minute. One centimeter square is 10 power minus four meter square. Okay. Therefore, area is 100 into 10 power minus four meter square, or area can I say is 10 power minus two meter square, the first data that I got. Tell me, did you understand this much? Area is 100 centimeter square, but I write it as 100 into 10 power minus four meter square. Continue has 500 tons. That means number of tons is equal to 500. Magnetic field of 0 0.1 Weber per meter square. That means capital B is given as 0 0.1 Weber per meter square is perpendicular to both ends of the coil. Perpendicular to ends of the coil means parallel to the whole system. That means theta equal to zero. The field is reduced to zero in 0 0.1 second. That means time is 0 0.1 second. Now, if the magnetic field is reduced from 0 0.1 to zero, tell me what is the change in magnetic field? Can I say the change in magnetic field is 0 0.1 itself? Because it changes from 0 0.1 to zero. Therefore, can I say the change is 0 0.1 itself? Calculate the induced EMF. Now look at the formula. Can I say E is equal to minus D phi by DT, Lenz law. Look at the formula that I've written. Can I say the formula that I've written is Lenz law, E is equal to minus D phi by DT, or can I write it as, look at this, minus phi can be written as BA by DT, because flux is equal to B into A. 11 standard formula. I'm not putting differentiation sign anymore because no question has any unknown term. I don't need to differentiate anything because direct values are given. Therefore, can I write phi is BA by DT? Now, please look at the screen. Now, can I say since N number of turns are given, where is it given? Since N number of turns are given, can I write E is equal to minus NBA by DT? because it is into an n number of turns. So now tell me, what is the value of n that is given? 500. n is 500. What is b? 0 0.1. What is a? 10 power 10 minus 2. Minus two. Upon, what is time? 0 0.1. Correct? Now, look at the screen. Can I say... 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 will cancel. And 500 two zeros will cancel with 10 power minus 2, leaving behind only 5. The for answer is 5 volt. I get a negative sign actually to indicate that it is opposing lens law, correct? It is opposing the field. But what is the value of my EMF? 5 volt. Now, if you look at the screen uh, and if you look at the options, Options are 1, 5, 50, and 0. So which option will I select? I will select option B, B which is 5 volt. Clear? Got the formula? Got the logic? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. Similarly, we will start uh, sir, with... So can you repeat why did you put minus sign again? It is Lenz law. No? I put minus sign because I use Lenz law. If I use Faraday's law, I don't need to put. This formula that I have taken, say I put a box. This is exactly the formula for Lenz law. E is equal to minus. And minus has come from Lenz law. And what does that minus signify? It signifies that EMF is opposing the change in flux. EMF is opposing the change in flux. Okay, sir. 
now start with question number five. Start. Got the answer, anyone, for the fifth one? So D. Mm, correct, D is correct. Okay, let us start. Now, a coil has an area, listen to this. A coil has an area of 0 0.05 meters square. Can I say it is given in SI unit itself, so I don't need to do any conversion. 0 0.05, I can leave it as 0 0.05 itself. Continue. And it has 800 tons. Therefore, capital N or small letter N is equal to 800 tons. It is placed perpendicularly in a magnetic field of strength. So it is placed perpendicularly. Listen to it. It is placed perpendicularly. Then it is rotated also by 90. Just take the question. Therefore, can I say I don't need to consider the angle at all? Okay. And what is the magnetic field strength? Four into 10 power five, 10 power minus five, web upper meter square. Web upper meter square is nothing but Tesla. Therefore, can I say magnetic field is given as four into 10 power minus five. And the time is 0 0.1 second. Now the average GMF induced is minus D5 by DT or minus phi is B A by dt now since n number of turns are there it is minus nba by dt now minus what is n 800 what is b 4 into 10 power minus 5 into a what is a 0 0.05 upon dt dt is 0 0.1 Everyone got till here? Everyone got till here? Yes, sir. No. Yes. Let me write it again on a single line. So can I write 
minus, I'll ignore the negative sign now. 800, can I write it as 8 into 10 square? Correct? 800, can I write it as 8 into 10 square into 4 into 10 power minus 5? And 0 0.5 can be written as 5 into 10 power minus 2. Just tell me yes or no. 0 0.05 yes, yes, is actually sir. 5 into 10 power minus 2 divided by 0 0.1 can I write it as 10 power minus 1. Understood my substitution and simplification. 0 0.1 I wrote it as 10 power minus 1. Now let me continue further. The first thing I will do is I will cancel 10 power 2 and 10 power minus 2. That must be finished. Correct. Now, next I will do is what is 5 into 4? 20. What is 20 into 8? 160. 160. Therefore, can I write 160 into now, can I say this is considered, this is considered, this is considered 10 power minus 5. Okay. Div divided by 10 power minus 1. If I take 10 power minus 1 to the numerator, I, it becomes 10 power plus 1. Therefore, can I say it will become 1, 10 power minus 4 into 10 power minus 4. Can I say 160 into 10 power minus 4 is 16 into 10 power minus 3? Because 1, 0 goes with minus 4. Now look at the options now. Now tell me, which option do you think directly matches with our answer of 16 D. into 10? D. D. Understood? How did you get this answer? Same formula we have used for question number 4 and 5. Same question, uh, logic. Okay, now again, using a similar logic, try to solve question number six. Even I will do it, but try to solve question number six. In that the clue is, please look at the screen once. Since angle is given as 45 degree, can I say flux is equal to B dot A? Please look at the screen. I can write it as B A cos theta because dot product can be written as A dot B can be written as A B cos theta. Therefore, the clue for question number six is this when i substitute in flux it is b dot a and b dot a is b a cost theta okay now start then even i will do it in some time Getting the answer, anyone? Let me know. I 
I'll give you one more minute and then I will do it. In the meantime, try to give me the answer. Same formula, same logic. Try to give me the answer. Sir, is it B? Okay. The start? No, see here. A square loop of wire of side 10 centimeter. Now, whenever side of a square it is given. You can do anything with it. I cannot do anything of us. It's given area. Correct. Now, can I say area is nothing but length square? Area is nothing but length square. And what is the length given as 10 centimeter? So, can I say 10 centimeter is square? Correct. 10 centimeter is 10 into 10 power minus 2. Why did I do 10 into 10 power minus 2? Because it is a now tell me, 10 into 10 power minus 2, can I say is 10 power minus 1 the whole square? Now what is 10 power minus 1 the whole square? 10 power minus 1 the whole square is 10 power minus 2. Therefore, I can say area is given as 10 power minus 2. This is my first data. Everyone make a note. Okay. So can you please repeat? I was asking. So can you please repeat it again? Hmm. Area is given as length square, correct? Length is given as ten centimeter. So ten centimeter, the whole square will become ten power minus two meter square. It will become ten power minus two meter square. So this is the data for the area. Okay. Continue the question. It is placed at an angle of 45 degree. Therefore, theta is equal to 45 degree. Okay. With the magnetic field that changes uniformly from 0 0.1 Tesla to 0. That means change in magnetic field is 0 0.1 Tesla. Correct. And Time is 0 0.7 second. What is the induced current in the loop of resistance 1 ohm? What is the induced current in the loop of resistance 1 ohm? Now, before I find current, let me find EMF itself. Let me find EMF itself. Now tell me what is the formula for EMF? E is equal to minus d phi by dt or e is equal to minus phi can be written as b a cos theta upon dt correct it can be written as minus b a cos theta upon dt now e equal to minus b is 0 0.1 a is 10 power minus 2 cos theta is cos 45 which is 1 by root 2 upon dt is 0 0.7 tell me are you clear till here yes all of 
So and it is this. Now E is equal to, can you solve and tell me what is the answer only for E? Remember, E is not asked in the question. What is asked in the question is current. But from E, I'll get current. Now tell me, if I solve this, now my simple question to you is, this root two and this 0 0.7, where will 0 0.7 go? It will go with root two or it will go above root two? That is my question. Go with 0 0.7. So I'll write something on the screen. Tell me if you are agreeing with that. It is 0 0.1 into 10 power minus 2 upon 0 0.7 into root 2. Tell me if this is right. Yes, sir. Correct. Now tell me, what do you think is the approximate answer for this? So I have a question. Why did you put 0 to root 2 down? Because cos 45 is 1 by root 2. But then, so it can even be up now. So why did you put it down? I did not put down. I put cos theta is 1 by root 2. So root 2 came. Okay, down. okay. okay. Now, so and tell me what answer you're getting for E. Option A. Hmm. Correct. Now, listen to this. How do I put it in words? Okay, I'll put it in words like this here. 0 0.7 into root 2 is nothing but 0 0.7 into 1.4, correct? Because root 2 is 1.4. 0 0.7 into root 2 is nothing but 0 0.7 into 1.4. And 0 0.7 into 1.4 is almost 0 0.98, almost 0 0.9, which can almost be taken equal to 1. This is the logic or this is the clue where most of the students get stuck. 0 0.7 into root 2. If you want, you can take your calculator and check whether the answer is almost coming close to 1 because root 2, I'll take it as 1.4. If I take that, tell me what is the value for E you will get. You will get answer for E as 0 0.1 into 10 power minus 2 itself because denominator has become 1. Therefore, can I say E will become equal to 1 into 10 power minus 3 or E will be equal to, okay, it is 1 milli, but we'll take it as 1 into 10 power minus 3. Now, look at the screen, everyone. I'll finish the question. Now, can I say current in the circuit, I will be equal to E by R. Everyone knows this formula, current is equal to voltage upon resistance. Yes, sir. And E is nothing but 1 into 10 power minus 3 divided by R. What is R given in the question as? It is given as 1 ohm. One. Therefore, can I say answer is 1 into 10 power minus 3 or 1 milliampere, which is option A. Check all of you. Getting it now? Now try to solve it again on your own and tell me if you are getting the same answer. Okay, all of you start. So can you please tell me how did you get one meter ampere after the substitution? One into 10 power minus three by one is one into 10 power minus three only. And 10 power minus three can be substituted as milli because 10 power minus three is milli. Therefore answer is one milli ampere.
Okay. Now, question number eight, take it as your homework one. Question number eight, take it as your homework one. Turn the page. Turn the page. Question number 10, start solving. Question number 10, start solving. So can you repeat the homework question? Question number eight. Now start solving question number 10. The logic is simple. Now look at the screen. Let me draw the system. A rectangular loop of wire shown below is coplanar with a long wire carrying current I. So now they are saying that there is a long current carrying wire and there is a loop. A rectangular loop of wire shown below is coplanar with a long wire carrying current I. The loop is pulled to the right as indicated. The loop is pulled towards the right means the system is pulled towards the right. Switch on your camera, okay? The system is pulled towards the right. Now, can I say the system is pulled towards the right? This wire and this loop are attracting each other, correct? This wire and this loop are attracting each other because it is pulled towards the right. Now, since they are attracting each other, you know from magnetic effect of electric current that only when the two wires carry current in the same direction, they attract each other. Do you agree? Only when two wires, when they carry current in the same direction, they attract each other. Therefore, do I know the direction now? Can I say this will be the direction? Now, this direction is clockwise or anti-clockwise? This direction clockwise. is clockwise. clockwise. Therefore, clockwise. I got my first answer. The direction is clockwise. And since the system was pulled towards the right, according to Lenz law, according to Lenz law, can I say it will be pulled towards the left as a reaction? because Lenz law is opposing. Therefore, can I say the next answer is pulled towards the left as a reaction to right. 
Now look at the options. Okay. Uh, they have given three options, but I think with one option itself, I can get the right answer. Tell me. With the first two answers itself, I got the answer. Tell me which option matches. First, when I say clockwise itself, option B. A and option C are out. Towards the left, when I say option D is out, therefore answer is option B. Okay. It is a direct theory part actually. Do you remember, tell me from your last chapter, that is magnetic effect, when current carry in the same direction they attract and when the current is going in opposite direction they repel okay? okay that is the logic okay now question number 11 take it as your next homework one one question number 11 take it as your next homework question number 13 start solving this is little one or two steps more, but try to start solving. Question number 13, start. Give me the answer over the message box. Now, if you look at question number 13, if you look at question number 13, what they have given is, a, in a circuit with a coil of resistance 2 ohm, that means resistance is equal to 2 ohm, the magnetic flux changes from 2 vapor to 10 vapor. That means, can I say the change in flux is 8 Weber, can I say the change in flux is 8 Weber because 2 Weber to 10 Weber, the change is 8 Weber and the time is 0 0.2 second. What is the charge that flows in the coil during this time? What is the charge that flows during this time? Now, this is the question. Now, before I find charge, let me find EMF. Now, can I say EMF is equal to minus D5 by DT? 
everyone knows this formula from Lenz law. E is equal to minus d phi by dt. So can I write it as minus 8 divided by 0 0.2. Minus 8 divided by 0 0.2. Or can I say EMF is equal to 80 divided by 2, ignoring the negative sign. 80 divided by 2 is same as 8 divided by 0 0.2. Therefore, can I say answer is 40. Got the first answer. Can I say my EMF is 40? Now, what is the current which flows? Tell me. Can I say I is equal to E, e by R. R? That is same Ohm's law. I is equal to E by R. Now, E is 40 and R is 2. Therefore, can I say current is 20 ampere? Can I say current is 20 ampere? Now, Q is equal to IT. IT, correct? The formula for charge is Q is equal to IT. Now, I is equal to 20 and T is equal to 0 0.2. Therefore, oh. can I say this 20 and this 0 0.2, this will cancel. Therefore, I'm left with 2 into 2, which is nothing but 4 Coulomb. Therefore, answer will be nothing but B, 4 Coulomb. So check and tell me if all of you are getting the answer as 4 Coulomb. We did step by step. And finally, we got the answer as 4 Coulomb. Just check all of you. Getting it? Let me know. If you're not getting it also, let me know. I can tell again. But everyone should be in a position to get the answer as 4 Coulomb. So when the answer came as 40, the minus sign goes off. Minus so sign still remains, but we ignore the minus sign because minus sign actually indicates direction, not the magnitude. So we ignore it. Okay. So, sir, uh, every case it won't go off. Now it just depends on the sentence. True. Depends on the question. Okay. I'll give you one minute. Try to do this problem again. Then we go to the next set of questions. Question number 15, take it as your next homework. One five. Question number 15, take it as your next homework. Question number 16, start solving. One six. Question number 16. All of you switch on your cam and keep. Question number 16, take it as your. No, do it right now. Question number 16. Do it now. We have done a similar, uh, actually we have done the same one in our notes in the last class. Same scenario we have explained in the class. What happens when a North Pole goes towards the coil? Start. Okay. 
Now the question is, listen, right? A metallic ring is attached with the wall of a room. When the north pole of a magnet is brought near it, the induced current. Now, last class itself, when we were doing the coil and magnet experiment, I said, if this is the coil and if this is the magnet, if the north pole of a magnet come towards the coil, the coil itself behaves like a north pole, correct? To repel it. And the current of the north pole is in the anti-clockwise direction check because it is north. Therefore, answer will be C that it is going in the anti-clockwise direction. Now, the same logic and the same question just asked in a different way is question number 17. Read the sentence and tell me what should be the answer for question number 17. Start. Can I say question number 17 is again anti-clockwise. It is just a different way of asking the same question, correct? It is just a different way of asking the same question. What they are saying, the south pole, the north pole of a long horizontal magnet is being brought closer to a conducting plane, means a loop along the perpendicular direction. What is the direction of induced current? Can I say the direction of induced current will be anti-clockwise itself again because the coil behaves like the north pole. The coil behaves like the north pole itself. Okay. Next question number 21 will be your next homework. Question number 21 will be your next homework. Okay. Question number 24 also will be your next homework. Question number 24 will be your next homework. Sir, can you repeat? Question number 21 and question number 24. Your next homework. Taken it. Question number 21 and question number 24. Okay. Now, on the same page, page number 25, question number two, EMI in motion, question number two. And the clue for these kind of problems is, I know this formula. Everyone, please look at the screen. We solved some problems based on this formula in the last class check. Yeah. E is equal to BLV sine theta or BLV if it is 90. If there is some angle, then BLV sine theta. Based on this logic, start page number 25, question number two. Start page number 25, question number two. Starts off.
Okay, listen now. We'll start. A straight conductor of length four meter, therefore can I say length is equal to four meter, moves around at a speed of 10 meter per second, therefore speed is 10 meter per second, when the conductor makes an angle of 30 degree, when a conductor makes an angle of 30 degree with the direction of magnetic field of induction, B is equal to 0 0.1 per meter square. Then the induced EMF is, now the induced EMF E will be equal to BLV sine theta. So BLV theta all are given, therefore you will get the answer as D. Tell me, are you getting this or not? You'll get the answer as B. Sine that is half. Okay. Sign 30 is half. Question number three, take it as your next homework. Question number three, take it as your next homework. Question number five, start solving. Question number five, start solving. Question number three, Ketaram, take it as homework. Question number five, start solving and give me the answer. Can I say question number five? Uh, a length 50 centimeter. Therefore, can I say length is equal to 50 centimeter means half meter or 0 0.5 meter. Correct? Centimeter is 50 centimeters half. Moves with a velocity of 300. 100 meter per minute perpendicular to a magnetic field. Now, 300 meter per minute is how many meter per second? Think about it, okay? 300 meter per minute is how many meter per second? Tell me. So for example, in 60 second, if it goes 300, in one second, five. five meter per second. It is going with a velocity of five meter per second. 300 meter per minute means it is going at a velocity of five meter per second. Correct. Now we just divide it by 60. So that is the velocity that is given. Okay. And if the EMF induced in the wire is Two volt. If the EMF induced in the wire is two volt, what is the magnitude of the field? That means I have to find what is the magnitude of the field. Okay. 
and theta is perpendicular, so I don't need to take sine theta. Therefore, I know the formula E is equal to BLV. Therefore, B will be equal to E by LV. Correct? I just need uh, B. Excuse me, sir. Hmm? Sir, I don't understand why did you take 5 meter per second? Okay. Why did I take 5 meter per second? Can anyone answer? Why did I take 5 meter per second? Sir, minute the end. Divide by 16. Hmm. Why did it take five? I'll tell you because in the question it is 300 meter per minute, but our SI unit of velocity is meter per second. That means I have to convert meter per minute into meter per second. That is why I have to divide it by 60, and that is how I will get the answer as five. Is okay. it clear? Yeah. Now E will be two. L will be 0 0.5 and V will be 5. Correct? So can I say you will get the answer as C? All of you are getting it? Answer as C? Yes. Okay. Everyone? Okay. Start with question number 6. Start with question number 6. Start with question number six. Start with question number six. The answer should come direct. So tell me what is the answer I'm getting for question number six? Same E is equal to BLV. B is the answer. Hmm, correct. Option. Option B. For question number six. Just check if you're getting it. Okay, now, next page, question number eight, start solving. Next page, question number eight, start solving. Now look at question number eight. All of you look at the screen. Question number eight. 
As shown in the figure, the rod makes contact and completes the circuit. The circuit is perpendicular to the magnetic field with B. Therefore, they have given the value for B as 0.15 Tesla. And if the resistance R is equal to 3 ohm, force needed to move. That means I need to calculate force. The rod with the constant speed of two meter per second. Okay. Now from the diagram, I get length. Look at the length is 0 0.5 meter. Just check. Now from the last chapter, you know the formula for force is BIL sine theta or ILB sine theta, but this time theta is 90. Therefore, I can just write force as BIL. Remember in the last chapter, force is equal to BIL or ILB sine theta. Therefore, the formula for force is BIL. Now, can I write BIL as B as it is? I can I write it as E by R into L because current is voltage upon resistance. Now, everyone, please once look at the screen. Therefore, the first formula, I'll start with the basic formula for force, BIL. This is the basic formula for force in a magnetic field. F is equal to BIL sine theta. And I, I substituted it as E by R. Or now can I say F is equal to B as it is. Okay. Now L as it is. R as it is. Now instead of E, can I substitute BLV? Because I know that E is equal to BLV from this chapter itself. Now can I write F is equal to B square. L square V upon R. Can I say F is equal to B square L square V upon R? All of you getting it? B square L square V upon R. Now that, now look at the screen again. Now that can I say B is given in the question, L is given in the diagram, V is given in the question, R is also given in the question. So simplify and substitute and tell me now what do you get the answer for force as. I have given you the steps how you come till the last one. You just have to simplify and give me the answer. Start. So after when we put decimal maximum two points, we take after decimal now. Yes, you can take after two points. No problem. Option A. Hmm. Option A is the right one. Option A is the right answer. Switch on your cam, all of you.
when you simplify, you will get the answer as option A. Just check. When you simplify, you will get the answer as option A. Okay. Now, I'll give you one clue for the next one. See question number nine. Okay. See question number nine. Once just listen to me. See question number nine. Now, in question number nine, we have to equate two formulae for force. In question number nine, I have to equate two formulae for force. One formula for force is this one. We check this one. And that I have to equate it to mg because I have to balance it. Now, if I equate two formulae for force, one is v square L square V by R, correct? One is v square L square V by R is equal to mg. From this formula, you will get the answer for question number nine. This is the clue. From this formula, you will get the answer for question number nine. So this is the clue. So start. Option B. Correct. Okay. Answer will be option B. Tell me if you're understanding for the ninth one. Because if I do B square L square V by R equal to MG, and if I want V, I have to just keep V on one side and all other terms on the other side, I will get answer as B. Tell me, are you getting it? Okay. Therefore, question number nine, answer is B, just by equating the two formula for force that are on your screen. Okay, now start with question number 15, one five on the next page. Page number 27, question number 15, start. Page number 27, question number 15, start with that problem. Page number 27, question number 15. So I have it, uh, I have it on page number 28. Can you please uh, say the question? Page number 27, question number 15. Two identical metallic square loops. Question number 15, start. Okay, now, two identical metallic square loops, L1 and L2. So for example, I will take L1 and I will take L2. 
are placed next to each other with, the, with their sides parallel on a smooth horizontal table. Loop L1 is fixed and the current which increases as a function of time. Now just imagine the current is going in clockwise direction. Just imagine. Therefore, can I see if the current over here is going in clockwise direction? According to Lenz's law, this loop will oppose it. Correct? This loop will oppose it. And therefore, can I say the current over here will go in anti-clockwise direction or it will go in the opposite direction? So, I will just take one side. Now, I will take this side. Now, if the current is going like this over here, can I say to oppose this, this one will go in opposite direction according to Lenz's law. Now, tell me what happens when two wires carry current in opposite direction. Repel. Two, they will re repel each other. Therefore, can I say <clears throat> my loop two or my square two will move away from L1. My L2 will move away from L1 because according to Lenz's law, first it will oppose the direction of current. And once it opposes the direction of current, the currents in both parallel loops will be in opposite direction and therefore they will repel each other. Therefore, answer for this will be D. It will move away from L1. Check. Answer will be D. It will move away from L1. Are you getting it? Answer for question number 15. Now start with question number 17. Start with question number 17. Start with question number 17 on the same page. Now, question number 17. An aircraft with the wingspan of 40 meter, that means length is equal to 40 meter with the speed of 1080 kilometer per hour. It is given in kilometer per hour. So to convert into meter per second, I need to multiply into five by 18. Correct, I need to multiply into five by 18 to convert kilometer per hour into meter per second uh, in the eastward direction of a constant altitude in the northern hemisphere where the vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field is 1.75 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. What is the EMF developed between the wings? Therefore, everything is given. Only thing that is not given is velocity in meter per second. But I know I can convert into meter per second by multiplying into 5 by 18. Therefore, do this into this into this. And tell me what answer will you get for EMF equal to BLV. Start. You should get the answer as D. Tell me, are you getting that when you simplify? Akhilesh, correct? Yes. Others, just check whether yes, you're getting sir. the answer.
Okay, getting it. Answer will come as D. Everyone switch on your cam. Answer will come as D. Now. Sir, D or B? D, Delhi. Now, please look at the screen. I'll just do some new topic. Now, what happens when inductors are connected in series? Means what happens if self-induction are in series? For example, self-induction of coil 1 is L1. Self-induction of coil 2 is L2. Self-induction of coil 3 is L3. And all the coils are kept in series. Therefore, my equivalent series resistance or not resistance, inductance. My equivalent series inductance is nothing but L1 plus L2 plus L3. This is my first formula. Can I say it is the same as resistance? When resistance are connected in series also, I get equivalent resistance as R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Similarly, over here, I get L series is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3. Is it clear, all of you? I'll get L1 plus L2 plus L3. So for inductance in series is L1 plus L2 plus L3. Clear? Now, can you predict what happens when inductance are connected in parallel? What happens when- One upon L1 plus one upon L2. Correct. Same like resistance. Before, can I say when inductance are connected in parallel, when inductance are connected in parallel, it will be one by equal, one by L parallel will be equal to one by L1 plus one by L2 plus dot, 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 one by Ln. This is the formula for inductance in parallel. So inductance in series is given by L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus dot, dot, dot. And inductance in parallel is given as 1 by LP is equal to 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus dot 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 1 by LN. Now, if you notice the formula, you will see that it is the same as resistance. Like resistance in series, what formula you had? And resistance in parallel, what formula you had? It is similar to that. Is it fine? It is similar to resistance in series and resistance in parallel. Okay. Now, next topic is relation between flux and inductance. Write down. The relation between flux and inductance. The relation between flux and inductance. And the formula is, what is the relation between flux and inductance? N phi is equal to Li. You can remember this as Lyon formula. Look at this. Actually, this is the formula, but see here. Understood how? Where L is the self inductance. Where L is the self inductance. I is the current. Phi is the flux. And N is number of terms. N is number of terms. This is the relation between flux and inductance. This is so three formula you have studied. The first formula is what happens when inductors are connected in series. I get L series is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus dot dot dot. What happens when inductors are connected in parallel? I get 1 by LP is equal to 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus dot dot dot. 
Next one is what is the relation between flux and inductance? I get N phi is equal to L i. Correct? I get N phi is equal to L i. And the next formula is energy stored in an inductive circuit. Right on, sign it in. Energy stored in an inductive circuit. energy stored in an inductive circuit and the formula for energy stored in an inductive circuit is half l i square this is the formula of energy stored in an inductive circuit half l i square where e stands for energy itself l stands for self inductance And I stands for current. Then I stands for current. So for E is energy, L is inductance, and I is current. Is it clear? So we have done four formulae. One is inductor in series, one is inductor in parallel, one is relation between inductance and flux, and one is energy stored in an inductive circuit. Now making use of inductance in series and parallel, take question number two as homework on page 27. Under static EMI, there is something called question number two. The clue is you have to make use of inductance in series formula and inductance in parallel formula. So take it as your homework. Page number 27, question number two. Okay. Next, question number four, start solving. Question number four, start solving. Page number 27, question number four, start. Page number 27, question number four, start solving. Okay, now uh, listen to the question. The inductance of a close pack coil of 400 turns means N is equal to 400 is 8 milli Henry, means 8 into 10 power minus 3 Henry. The current of 5 milliampere means current is 5 into 10 power minus 3 is past it. What is the magnetic flux? Therefore, can I say my Lyon formula that is L i is equal to okay, or N phi is equal to L i. So I have to find flux. Therefore, can I say flux will be L i divided by N. Now what is L is it is 8 into 10 power minus 3 i is 5 into 10 power minus 3 upon n. n is 400. Okay. 
So simplify. So what answer I'll get? Let me write over here itself. What answer I will get is eight five of forty into ten power minus six because ten power minus three minus three will be ten power minus six upon four hundred. Correct. Therefore, forty ones are forty tens are four hundred. Therefore, I get ten power minus six upon ten. Now, if I take ten to the numerator, it becomes ten power minus seven. It becomes ten power minus seven. Correct. Now, ten power minus seven is my answer. But the options are in mu naught. Now, I know ten power minus seven can be written as mu naught by four pi. Correct. Because mu naught by four pi value is ten power minus seven. Therefore, mu naught by four pi option is A. Just check. Mu naught by four pi answer is A. Or the correct option which matches mu naught by four pi is option A. Just check. Got it? Now turn the page. Come to page number twenty-eight. Everyone, come to page number twenty-eight. In that page number twenty-eight, come to question number eleven and start solving. Come to question number eleven and start solving. Option D. Correct. Option D is correct. Okay, let us start with the question itself. Let us see what is given. The mutual inductance between the two coils, that is M, is 1.25 Henry. If the current in the primary changes at the rate of, therefore, dI by dt is 80, because it is ampere per second, then the induced EMF will be and the induced EMF will be. Now I know M is equal to E divided by DI by DT. This is the formula for mutual induction we did in the last case. From this formula, can I say E will be equal to M into DI by DT. From this formula, I can say E is equal to M into DI by DT or E is equal to M is 1.25 into di by dt is 80. Now 1.25 into 80, if I look at the option, it is directly 100. Therefore, answer will be 
D. Just check. Are you getting it for question number 11? Answer as 100. Just check. Answer is D. Getting it all of you? No. Sir, please show the previous slide for two seconds. What happened? The previous slide for two seconds. Hmm. Done, sir. Question number 12 starts on it. Question number Option B. Correct. Okay, option B is right. Everyone start solving and tell me. Now, look at question number 12. If the current of 3 ampere flowing in the primary of a coil is reduced to zero. That means change in current will be three ampere itself because from three ampere, it is reduced to zero in 0 0.001 second. Then the induced EMF in the secondary coil is 1,000, no, 15,000 volt. What is the mutual inductance? Now, I know the formula for mutual inductance M is equal to E upon di by dt. Now, what is E equal to 15,000 upon di is 3 upon dt is 0 0.001. Now, start. What will be the answer? Solve it. Can I say 15,000 into 0 0.001 upon 3 will be my next step. Will be my next step check. So, solve this and tell me what should be the answer. Now, 15,000 can I write it as 15 into 10 power 3 into 0 0.001 can be written as 1 into 10 power minus 1 minus 2. Okay. So can I say this 3 and this minus 3 will cancel. I am left with 15 by 3. Answer is 5. Therefore, answer for the 12th one is 5 Henry, which is option B. Getting it, it's direct simplification. Okay. Now, start with 13th one. Start with 13th one. Same page, 13th. So, powers with negative and positive can get, can get cancelled? Yeah, they'll get cancelled. Plus 3 and minus 3.
D is the option. Three hundred. Correct. I think uh, answer will be D. Getting it three hundred volt. Are you getting the answer as three hundred volt? Yes, sir. Should I solve it or are you getting it? It's direct formula and substitution. Getting it. Sir. Okay, fine. Yes, sir, but here we will get about EMF of secondary, but we are asking of primary. Hmm. This is of e secondary, no? Mm -hmm. And they are asking us primary. In the primary, they are asking us an induced EMF in secondary due to the change in the primary. See the sentence. They are asking a secondary change. Okay, got it. Okay, last question for today. Okay, and that question is question number sixteen, and you have to use the formula for energy stored in an inductor. Okay, start. Few people have college at nine ten, so you have to finish it before that. So finish this question. What is the formula for energy stored in an inductor? Formula for energy stored in an inductor half LI. is half L I square. Now, using this formula, you have to solve question number sixteen. Start. Two fifty joule. Two fifty joule is correct. Others try to get it. Half L I square. The answer for question number sixteen will be two fifty joule. Tell me, are you getting it using this formula, where I is equal to E by R? Tell me, all of you, yeah. or should I solve it? Sir, please solve it. Okay. So a coil of resistance ten ohm. Therefore, can I say R is equal to ten ohm? Inductance is five Henry. Is connected to a hundred volt battery. Now tell me from this data. Can I get current? What is current? I yes, is sir. equal to E by R. What is E? Hundred by ten is equal to ten. Now, can I find the energy using the formula half L I square? So tell me. If I use the formula half L I square, half will remain as it is. What is L phi, and what is I square? I square will be ten square, which will be hundred. Therefore, phi into hundred will be five hundred by two. Five hundred by two will be two fifty joule. Tell me, are you getting this much? Yes, sir. Understood. Therefore, answer for the sixteenth one will be two fifty joule. Clear? So it can't be two fifty odd. Two fifty odd. Or right, you're saying unit of energy. Yeah, sir. It cannot be because uh, Henry is the SI unit of inductance and ohm is the SI unit of resistance. So everything is given in SI unit. Therefore, our answer also should be in SI unit. Okay, got. Okay, with that, 
we stop for today and i think that's the last class for the week as well so with that we stop so thank you i will see you next week we will continue with emi itself okay do the homework and submit it bye bye thank you thank you so much bye bye, bye. 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 bye.